Hi everybody, it's Mary Grace Wallace, one of the genealogists with Family Tree Nuts. You know, I'm never gonna guess where I am. I am actually in Ketchum, Idaho, Sun Valley, just outside of Boise. I am at the grave site of Ernest Hemingway. Wow, this is really, really something for me because I actually collect all of his first edition books, as many as I can get my hands on. And I'm at the Ketchum Cemetery. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Ernest. He was born July 21st, 1899. He actually died July 2nd, 1961. The Ketchum Cemetery is pretty modest cemetery and I'm gonna show it to you. Um, there's sagebrush behind me on the hill here. It's a pretty small cemetery. It's just outside of Ketchum, uh, the center of town here. Uh, Hemingway's grave is rectangular. I'm gonna show it to you here. It's right behind me. It's granite. There's really nothing more than his, his name, as you can see, and his birth and his death dates. Hemingway was actually buried in a uh, rose-covered casket. It was dark gray. He rests next to his wife, Mary. I'm gonna show you, she's right here. He's also near his son, Jack. Jack is just over here and um, I'll give you good, clear pictures of all of this. Ernest is also buried near his friend, John Taylor, Bear Tracks. He went by Bear Tracks. That was one of uh, Ernest's guides. He used him as a guide for hunting. Ernest was big in hunting and uh, an outdoor adventurous. Ernest was a reporter for the Kansas Star. Then he signed up for the war in 1918 and eventually was seriously wounded by a mortar. Uh, that is where he kickstarted his literary career. And what a career it was. He wrote uh, Farewell to Arms. And that is where all of his adventures and all of his writing began. He spent time in Paris. He spent time in Key West where he had a house and he had quite a personality. If you've ever been to Key West and you can visit his home, it's amazing. There's polydactyl cats that are still there. Um, there's a pet cemetery there. He had amazing taste in furniture. I've been there. It was, it was a great place to visit. He spent time in Cuba and maybe that was a little bit of his downfall where he gained some paranoia and some things happened there. He spent his son summers in Wyoming and he spent his uh, winters in Key West. He liked his warm weather. Um, in the 1930s, he found Ketchum right here, Ketchum, Idaho. He spent some time in Africa. He spent time in China. He spent time in Cuba up until the 1960s. In Paris, in the late 50s, he found old manuscripts that he had left there in the 19 in the 1920s, and he started um, reworking them and rewrite and rewriting them until his health became so bad. He became bedridden in the 1950s for a short time, and then he and he was told by the doctors he needed to stop drinking. That probably didn't happen. Um, we know the the age-old joke about Hemingway ways whiskey and so many artists have have written songs about it and have you know album titled Hemingway's whiskey in fact in the late 1950s this is when he started getting depressed he was worried about taxes he was worried about money he continued to write though and rework um, materials that he had found and he continued to work hard finally in the 19 in 1960 we know that that was the last time that he and his wife Mary visited Cuba he was worried about his safety he was fearing that the FBI I had opened files on him and later we found out that that was actually the truth. He was never to return to Cuba and he actually left manuscripts there in a, ba in a bank vault, which is really interesting. We know that by this time he was becoming paranoid and his wife knew that he was actually becoming paranoid too. And he, he, was, he was really fearing at this time that um, the FBI was after him. And his wife brought him to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. But after three months of electroshock therapy, they let Hemingway go, they let him out and he came home to Ketchum, Idaho. But Mary found Hemingway in his kitchen with one of his shotguns. And so she called the doctor, had him sedated, and brought him to uh, the Sun Valley Hospital for more treatments. And in June, late June, they actually let Hemingway out. And in the early mornings of July 2nd, 1960,
51. Ernest used his favorite shotgun, uh, a double barrel shotgun. He used that double barrel shotgun actually to kill himself, to commit suicide. And we know that suicide is a very, very serious thing. And this was all over the newspaper and friends and family, they denied that um, that is actually what happened. But we know by all accounts that this is what happened to Ernest Hemingway. And poor Mary, his wife, she had to be sedated at the scene and, and taken to the hospital. One friend said that Ernest Hemingway had used the shotgun so many times that the shotgun was like a friend to Ernest Hemingway. So I also wanted to tell you about that there is a highway, a memorial highway dedicated to Ernest and there's a eulogy inscribed on the highway. And it's actually a eulogy that Hemingway had written to a friend um, years prior. And it's really pretty. It says, best of all, he loved the fall, the leaves yellow on cottonwoods, leaves floating on a trout stream and above the hills, the high blue windless skies, now he will be part of them forever. Beautiful eulogy to Ernest Hemingway. And once again, here we are, Family Tree Nuts, to pay our respects to Ernest Hemingway, wonderful author and great, great literary character and wonderful influence of fiction. And I'm Mary Grace Wallace, I'm gonna sign off here and just wanted to say, hey, Family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.